In the second DLC for Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, each of the original non-DLC playstyles got a small addition in the form of EX abilities. Many of them constitute significant changes to certain playstyles, while others just offer an additional way to attack that you can use or ignore at your leisure. Before moving on to make my final, all playstyles included tier list for this game, I need to take a close look at each of these EX abilities and consider how much they add or don't add to each of these playstyles overall power level. Let's explore all of the EX abilities today. Link One-Handed Weapon while holding X to power up a strong attack, move around to perform a power dash. This one, it kind of has a limited use. The actual ability to dash around while holding your attack doesn't do much, however you can hold on to a weak point revealing one and have much more mobility than before. This is very powerful and is akin to some other characters' abilities to ready weak point revealing moves in advance, but this is just kind of an odd way to get to it. Overall, it does increase this playstyle's value, but just by a little bit. Link Two-Handed Weapon Expand C1 to temporarily take normal damage as self-inflicted damage as well. Basically, this allows you to continue hitting the button after its normal C1 to create a limited time buff that will protect Link from damage by turning any kind of damage into temporary damage that you can heal up from with his normal C1. The buff itself only lasts for about 5 seconds, meaning you can only take a limited number of hits with it and then it'll be gone, so I question whether this one's even worth the time it takes to set up. It's a fun addition, but this buff doesn't last nearly long enough to reliably use. Link Spear. Press ZR up to three times in a row to do a quick series of lunging dashes. This really does help to speed up Spear Link quite a bit, and he was already a very fast playstyle at moving around. Before, his single dash was kind of inadequate for getting around, and powering it up really lets this playstyle feel, in my opinion at least, more what they were going for. Overall, it's a decent little upgrade, but at the end of the day, it won't affect much. Impa. Her C5 move has been expanded, and also while you have three symbols charged up, you can press X after her C1 to unleash a powerful attack. Adding the ability to reveal weak points to Impa's C5 is pretty huge. Given her natural power, with her already being one of the best playstyles in the game, having easy access to also force out enemy weak points the same as everyone else would be very huge. This new attack is kind of slow, but it is not nearly as slow or as fiddly as getting the weak point revealing move on her C6. Overall, this is a really big boost for Impa, but given how hard it is to use, one that is still kind of fair. The next addition to her C1 allows her to have another little attack, but it doesn't change much. Given the automatic targeting of her C1, it's not always a great attack to choose, and this buff to it in specific circumstances isn't necessarily amazing. I personally would rather use a fully charged charged Impa for her incredible regular attacks, charging up her special meter ridiculously fast. Zelda Sheikah Slate. Add new attacks that your remote bombs can perform while under your control. Basically, this adds a forward rush attack to the controllable bomb, and also pressing X will allow you to charge up for the explosion. This doesn't really add much more other than a tiny bit more damage that you can get by controlling the bomb. However, actually controlling the bomb is sort of a waste of time in the first place. It's way better to cancel out of it and get to one of this playstyle's other really great combinations. Zelda Bow of Light. While luminescent, unleash a powerful attack when you dash with B. This will help Zelda get some more value out of her luminescent form when she's in close range, with some easy, spammable damage. Having the slightly changed and worse dodge in this form was always kind of a problem, so adding extra damage when you're dodging around with it does help to make up for that. Mifa. While in midair, press ZR to cloak yourself in water and dive to the ground. This basically gives Mifa a new finisher to her aerial strings. Her strong aerial attack always throws her forward in a long arc, so this gives her another way to punish enemies on the spot. It's a welcome change, but it's also a bit underwhelming. Daruk. Press ZL in time with an enemy's attack to unleash a burst attack. This one is amazing. This works very similar to Suga's counter move, and even though Daruk can't follow up on weak points very well, being able to make them appear far more frequently helps him a lot. If only they had patched his terrible stasis to allow for a dodge cancel, then Daruk would be able to dig himself out of the hole that he's in, being the least effective character in the game. Rivali. His mid-air C2 has been expanded, he can now press X to fire bomb arrows that explode after a short time. 
This basically turns the useless aerial grab attack, easily Revali's worst attack, into a move that sets up an exploding trap. The bomb arrows really linger for a long time before eventually blowing up, but this can be very effective to set out against bosses that tend to stand in place, like Guardians. Also, they will create wind after the bombs explode, which is a very quick way to get Revali back into the air, which can also help to counterbalance the worst part of his playstyle, which is how he automatically switches back down to the ground after doing some of his biggest attacks. Urbosa. Her C1 has been expanded. When the lightning gauge is full, press X an additional time to unleash a powerful attack. This one is massively powerful. Once you get Urbosa powered up, this attack gives her an easy way to reveal enemy weak point gauges. And given that if she follows up with a weak point smash attack, it will refill a huge portion of her charge, you can quickly go from weak point smash to weak point smash. Earlier, Urbosa was kind of a middling tier character, but this easily rockets her up to one of the strongest characters in the game. Hestu. His C6 has been expanded. All it tells you is press X to motivate the Koroks. I really wish this game's explanations were not so vague sometimes, because a lot of people have kind of a grudge against Hestu to begin with, and they might not understand just how much this increases his power level. Basically, when you use this expanded attack, for quite a while actually, all of his other strong attacks, if accompanied by Koroks, will always force out enemy weak point gauges. Note that this is only for the attacks where the Koroks actually do something, but still, that's most of them. This gives a sizable power boost to Hestu, and it helps to make up for his slow speed and large body. It probably won't shoot him up another tier, but it will make him a lot more powerful than others at a similar level. Sidon. His C1 has been expanded. Press X an additional time to summon fish-shaped waves that attack enemies alongside you. Again, this one doesn't really explain itself correctly. These fish waves actually just stick around until your next strong attack, after which they launch themselves. When they hit an enemy, they always force out enemy weak point gauges. And this continues the trend of giving many characters new access to an easy weak point auto revealer, but only some of them. Sidon was already pretty powerful, but this makes him even more so, and is just a great new feature for him to have access to. Unobo. A C7 has been added. You now press X to perform an attack that will always correspond to your power of protection. I gotta say, I wasn't expecting C7s to be added to this game, but basically each version of this is another auto weak point revealing attack. And in return for coming at the end of his full combo, you don't even have to worry about matching the right power to the right attack. This is sort of a brainless move. It kind of seems like it's just for players who refuse to learn Yunobo's mechanics, and maybe haven't understood how powerful he was in the past. Getting to this attack is a lot slower than just learning how to match your power of protection to Yunobo's moves, but it does fill in a niche, I suppose. Teba, another C7. He can press X to temporarily shorten your ZR charge time. Teba's ZR arrows were kind of only good for collecting KOs. Basically, you can charge it up while you're on the move, and it's a good opening shot when you're encountering anything big or lots of crowds. However, in a fast-paced fight where there's lots of enemies throwing around attacks all the time, being knocked out of it easily made it kind of useless. This temporary buff makes it a lot easier for you to fire out tons of arrows, and this is basically only good for shortening farming times. There was definitely a point in this game where I needed to farm a lot of items and monster certificates, and this will help you there, but it doesn't actually change Teba's power at all, which is actually a good thing because he definitely did not need a buff. Riju. Press Y during Patricia's Rampage, ZR, to attack with an additional burst of speed. This extra attack is actually a very easy to get to weak point revealer, which totally revolutionizes Riju's playstyle. Given that this comes in from such a fast dash, this might be one of the easiest and fastest ways to lock weak points into a stasis. Depending on when you activate it, you might end up flying right past the enemy that you want to punish, but if you can get this down pat, it makes Riju amazingly more powerful. This is a tremendous power boost for sure. Master Koga. While the stress gauge is low, press X during a ZR to do a gliding belly slam. Basically, this allows you to do his little zappy move before he can use his face laser, and then do a belly flop to get about one third of your stress level filled up. This is excellent for topping off the gauge when you're just a little bit away, or actually giving his bananas some usage by allowing you to freely get it all the way topped up without having to worry about wasting it, or needing to get into a combo before using it in your next big encounter. It doesn't add too much, but it's a nice little addition. King Rome. 
another C7. Press X to temporarily allow extra attacks when you repeatedly change forms. This, as it says on the tin, allows you to rapidly switch through your forms with the unique action button, adding in lots of extra little attacks. You can do this whenever you're doing your unique action form switch. So again, this is just an extra little ability that is only kind of marginally useful. Great Fairies. Her C1 has been expanded. Press X to summon a tornado that pulls enemies in. This creates quite a long-lasting tornado that sucks your enemies in, making it even easier for unique action spam from the fairies. This also helps the fairies with one of their biggest weaknesses, which is taking accidental damage from enemies due to the fairies' large hitbox. This just makes life a lot easier for the fairies, as this tornado lasts quite a long time, and I hope makes this really cool playstyle a lot more comfortable to play as for the people who tend to avoid them. Monk Maz Koshia. Hold ZR to attack with your ancient power. You can only do this big laser move when the monk is fully charged with ancient power, and it instantly drains all of your ancient power for a single short attack. This laser absolutely chews through enemy weak point gauges and makes it very easy to engage and instantly depower your foes as the monk. And I would say increases his power level quite a bit. Terako. His C1 has been expanded. Press X an additional time to unleash a laser barrage. While you can use this laser blast to target onto enemy weak points like heads and lock them into a stasis combo, overall this does have the same limitation as something like Link's arrows, and the game does not allow you to spam it repeatedly. Overall, this is a slow laser shot that can't even be dodge cancelled out of. I guess it's cool, but it doesn't change anything at all for Terrico, and given that he was already kind of a middling playstyle, with everyone else improving around him, it's going to affect him in a very negative way to not have something to increase his viability. Calamity Ganon. His C1 has been expanded. Press X to create a Malice Vortex that sucks enemies in. This vortex works very similarly to the Great Fairy's Tornado. However, when this one explodes at the end, it also forces out enemy weak points. Given that Calamity Ganon is balanced around having to build up to his Malice form in order to have easy access to weak points, this attack serves a very important purpose and is a huge power-up for Calamity Ganon. Now you can play him like a normal character until you also get access to your malice form, which increases his viability tremendously. Before, he would have been one of the lower tier characters, but this move alone could possibly jump him up one or two tier levels. And that's the end of them all. Overall, I have to say the EX abilities in DLC 2 work a lot like a rebalancing patch for this non-PvP game. There is clearly an effort to make some of the weaker characters more on level with the rest of the cast, while hardly touching the somewhat broken characters, which is why Daruk and Riju get absolutely awesome abilities, while Teba gets a minor change to a non-core ability. Overall, while some of these are very forgettable, all of them add a great bit of more fun to the game, changing up the playstyles just a little bit, and breathing a bit of new life onto them as well. I'm really curious which one of these are your favorite and why. For my next and last video on Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, I'm going to make my own final tier list for the game with all of these extra abilities considered. I hope to see you there. Big thank you to my top patrons DW7 Still Rules, Henry Gutierrez, and Ryan Poe, as well as to all of my other patrons on Patreon. If you would like to support this channel and my main channel Shanebrained, check out the links in the description. Thank you all very much.